Now we're going to take a look at strings in more detail. Uh, strings are a class, uh, so string variables are objects in Java, which means we have methods we can use on them, and we haven't talked too much about them. So I'm going to go look at this string access operations. It's 5.9 in the current layout. Um, so each uh, string is made up of characters, and the characters are assigned an index. So if you think of a word like here, um, we set uh, a string variable, user word, to stars. Uh, how this is stored in the computer is that we store each character individually in a whole kind of a, a list of characters. And each character is given an index starting at zero. So the first character is index zero, one, two, three, four, and there's five characters. The last one is given index of four. So it's kind of weird because they start with index zero here. Um, we can get at the individual characters by using the character at uh, method. So there's this character at method. And so this uh, example prints out the words in the scrambled order. I'm going to bring this up and play with it a little bit in BlueJ, and you're welcome to do the same thing. So if you open up the uh, Zybooks Chapter 5 in BlueJ, um, there's this uh, word scramble uh, example. And it will compile, and you can run it. Uh, And I'll ask you to enter a five-letter word. So you can enter things like stars. Uh, it'll tell you the size of the uh, word. Uh, print it out, and then print it out in a scrambled order. So let's look a little bit how it works. So again, we declare a string variable, user word. We ask them to enter a five-letter word. And we read that in using scanner.next. That reads in a word at a time into this string. We print it out. Now the, we can get the access to the length or the number of characters in a string with the length method. So we say user word dot length, and that will give us the number of characters. In this case, it's giving us five. There's five characters. Uh, we're printing out the word again, and now we're printing it out scram scrambled. And so we're saying user word character at three. So we're printing out the third one and then four. So again, if we look at our picture, um, Character at 3 will print out the R. Character at 4 will print out the S. Character at 1 will print out a T. Character at 0 will print out a capital S. Character at 2 will print out an A. So that prints it out in this kind of scrambled order. We could actually, if we just wanted, print it off in reverse order. We could just say we want the fourth character, the third character, the second character, the first character, and then index 0, the zeroth character. So those are our characters. Now if we compile that and run that again, um, it says enter a word and we can hit stars again and it'll print out uh, <laughs> charrettes, uh, stars backwards. And again, we can run it again and enter any word uh, and it'll print it out backwards. So apple. Now it only works with uh, five letter words. So if we try to enter a shorter, or let's do a longer word first. Um, so let's do uh, a longer word. Let's do apples. Uh, it's going to just work with the first uh, five letters. Character at four, three, two, one. It's going to skip character at six, even though there are, I mean, it's character at five, even though there are now six uh, characters and so there is a character at five we just don't have it programmed in once we get in the loops next uh, in unit six uh, we'll see how to do this uh, properly for any size of words but now it only works with uh, five letter words what happens if we enter a word that's too short so if I just enter a word like pair uh, I get this, oops, let's bring this up, a string, Java string out of bounds exception error here, and same over here, I get a string out of bounds exception error over here. I'm going to clear that. And what that means is that I've, um, let me show you. So I've entered a word that's a uh, pair, and its index are only 0, 1, 2, 3. And right away, one of the first things I do is say user word dot character at 4. 
Uh, and it tries to go through and tries to print out the fourth character, but there isn't one. And then it gives me that index out of range, out of bounds error. And that's an exception. We'll learn more about those types of runtime exceptions and errors later on uh, in the Java 2 course. So again, so there's an error if, this, if the word is too short. Now we could do some checks with this uh, to handle shorter words. Um, we could ask things like if user word dot length, if that is going to be uh, greater than four, then we can print out the fourth character. Uh, so you could actually do some checks here to make sure that this character exists before you print it out. Uh, similarly, you could do that for the third character and all the other characters before you print it out. Um, if you did something like this, it should be able to handle variable length words. Let's see if, how is that compiling. So I'm using, I'm checking the length of the word, seeing how long it is, and if it's long enough to, if it's five characters, it'll have a character at four, and I will print that out. It'll have a fourth index. Um, so now if I were to run this and enter pair or smaller word, it would uh, work out okay because these if then statements. So there are ways around this, but we'll actually learn better ways when we get into the loops than this sort of technique. Okay, so we've talked about this character at method to grab the individual characters out of a string. We've also talked about the length method. So go through these routines. They, they give you some introduction to some of these methods. Uh, again, they talk about the length method. There's a couple other ones. There's an is empty to check if your string has any Thing in it. Um, index of and substring. Let's talk about those a little bit. Uh, index of searches your string for another item. It can be a, a character or another string. Uh, and I'll search through that uh, and look for it. Now if it uh, finds it, it'll return the index of that location. Um, if it doesn't find it, it'll return a negative one. Uh, we'll be looking at a number of ways of using this index of. This is uh, we'll be using this in this week's uh, learning exercise where we're trying to try to parse weather strings. We'll search the weather strings for things like the temperature and figure out where that is starting and ending. Um, and then there's a substring which will find us the substring uh, for a character. Um, so if we have a word, we can grab certain strings out of it. So one of the common things we'll do with maybe index of is some string is search for things like um, so different things are stored in strings and that's why they're so uh, important in the computers besides words we also store numbers and lots of data as strings so like a phone number sometimes with the dashes sometimes without the dashes will be stored in it because uh, yeah phone number we can store as a string because we're not going to be uh, multiplying the phone number or dividing the phone number by a number same with social security numbers or other ID numbers or things like that they're often stored as strings uh, but like a phone number, maybe I will want to find uh, the dash in here. So I'll do a uh, an index of and find a dash in this string. And it'll tell me that the dash is at index 3. And then I could also use a substring and I could get, I could ask for the substring of this phone number. And I could ask for uh, locations from uh, 4 to 6. So if I had a phone number variable, I could just say substring, and we specify a starting index and an ending index. And so I could specify, like, give me everything from index 4 to index 6. Um, so if we have this phone number, we could actually store that and do substrings. Here, let's look at some simple Java code. Here's a string, phone number, and we're putting that phone number in here. We're printing it out. But we can also print out this the prefix, just this uh, seven to nine one. So we're going to start at um, index four and go through this. Now, um, substring does not print out the ending index. It prints out the ending index minus one. So um, we want to go through four to six, and so we'll actually say four to seven. Uh, this being the first uh, spot where it's not going to print out, it won't, it'll stop printing out at the 7, won't print out that. So if we were to run this, uh, 
it'll print out the full phone number and then print out the prefix here. Now we could also do some things like we could find this dash in here using the index of method and do it that way. So if we want to use index of to find the, so we want to find the first dash <clears throat> and print that out. So we can uh, use go phone dot index of. I'll call this index of method uh, and search. We're going to search for this dash in the phone number and it'll return the place that will find it. So it finds it at, at three and it'll return location will be three. And then we want to print out. We want to print out the prefix. So we're going to start at four and go through seven. So we're going to print out the prefix is substring and I'm going to start at location. Uh, if I just go to location. Uh, that'll actually print out the third one. Let's say I do location and I do location plus three. It's not going to quite be what I want. Uh, let me compile this and try that out. Um, so it says phone number prints out the prefix the first way. Now it finds the dash and prints out dash seven two. Uh, and I want to go a little bit bef beyond that. So when I find the location, I'm going to actually add one to it. So when I find the location, the phone index of, I'm not going to store that. I'm going to add one to that. So it'll store the location of the first <clears throat> uh, digit after the dash by adding that plus one. Um, and now I should be able to run this. Uh, let's clear this and run this again. And so now it's finding it, printing out the prefix both ways. So I can search for something and I can use that location in here. And we'll do this in our learning exercise this week. We'll do some work with more work with this. So index of and substring are important uh, methods when manipulating strings. And so go through these exercises to learn more about them. Uh, we talked about this common error of going outside the index error and this exception. We can be given, remember when we tried to, uh, we entered a sh too short of word and then we tried to do the index outside of that. So that's the thing. You can look at these challenge activities. Uh, they're not bad. Um, so this first one, you just want to print out the um, size of the string the user enters. Uh, and store that in string size. You can use the length method there. And then you can do this character matching and look at this sort of stuff. Now one thing we do want to watch when we're working with strings and characters is the difference between strings. Strings are stored in double quotes and string variables. Uh, characters are stored in single quotes. A character is always uh, a single character in single quotes. A string can be zero or more characters. So um, if I were to put uh, double quotes around the character B, uh, then it becomes a string. If I put single quotes around it, it's a character. So here we're doing, uh, we're working with both a string and a character. Um, and one thing to remember is this the character at method that we talked about here, this character at method will take a string and return one character from it. So whenever we call character at, we get a character from that, not necessarily necessarily a string. So sometimes when we're doing the string manipulation, you've got to watch what's a character and what's a string exactly. Um, and then here, when we're doing string, I mean characters, you can just compare if one character is equal to another. With strings, you have to use the dot equals. So just have to keep that in mind when you do that exercise. Uh, we're, you'll be working with characters here, so you can just check if they're equals. Okay, we're next going to talk about um, going on so string modifications. I'm just going to talk, uh, show you this solution uh, real quick uh, where we're doing a censored because it's a good example. So why don't you stop the video and try out this 5.0. Uh, 9.3 exercise and see how that goes. You're given a string and your job is to either print out uh, the output, that darn cat, whatever user input variable is, um, or if you find the word darn, a really bad swear word, if you find that in the input you want to print out censored instead. Okay, here's a quick hint. So here's what I've done so far. Again, we've got user input here. Uh, that darn cat, and we've got this. Uh, if uh, user input index of is darn, um, 
So I, I want to search, and you can use the index of to search. So we can say user input dot index of and search for darn there, and we have to decide what it says. And again, we want to either print out is we're going to either print out what they've input or else print out censored. But this isn't good. So what what does user input return if it finds darn? Like here, it'll return the index of that. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It'll return an index of 5. What if it doesn't find it? So if I look through up here where it talks about user input uh, or index of, uh, it returns the index of the first occurrence. Otherwise, it returns a negative 1. So if it doesn't find it, it returns a negative 1 here. So uh, again, play with this some more, and I'll show you the, resu uh, the results. Uh, of that. So there's a couple ways of setting this up. I just said if user input dot index of darn that string, so it searches for darn in the user input, which is uh, initially that darn cat. If it doesn't find it, it'll return negative one. So if it returns a negative one, if it equals negative one, then I just print out the user input. Otherwise, I print out censored. And so this will it'll run a couple tests and should pass. So that's a good example of this index of searching for some string inside a larger string. So that wraps up this unit. We're going to next look on some other more uh, operators and on strings.